Over in the pages of DC Comics, it's been an absolute blast to see the publisher really expand the new Golden Age line of comic book titles in so many fascinating directions. Last week, we got the opportunity to check in with the Sandman of the JSA known as Wesley Dodds. Seeing Wesley come into his own in 1940s Manhattan was really thrilling, but this week, Jay Garrick the Flash is looking to take things over in the past and present by utilizing the character of Judy. My name is Arako Braddock, and today, let's go ahead and explore how Jay is able to reunite over with his long-lost daughter in Jay Garrick the Flash issue one. But before we get deeper into the video, I want to encourage you to consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button over on this video. Jay and his long-lost daughter race side-by-side -side in the present day, spinning out of the events of Stargirl, The Lost Children, and Justice Society of America, Jay Garrick is reunited with his long-lost daughter, Judy. After being pulled from the timeline, Judy returns to a world where she and her dad aren't the only ones that ride the lightning. But is there enough space for her and Jay and Joan's life? And can they keep up with their teenage daughter and make up for lost time? Jay Garrick The Flash Issue 1 is written over from Jeremy Adams, featuring artwork from Diego Orlatugi. We have colors from Luis Guerrero, letters from Steve Wands, and a cover over from Jorge Corona, as well as Sarah Stern. Here's a look at the really gorgeous cover reuniting both Jay and Judy over on the comic book page. And I want to extend a quick thank you over to Adventures in Poor Taste for posting our preview and take a look over at some of the gorgeous interior art for Jay Garrick the Flash coming in over from Diego or Latugi. On this page that we have up on the screen, we can see both Jay and Judy working together to stop a dam from being compromised over from explosives. Really appreciate the way that Orlatugi is able to depict motion in the page here, as the two speedsters are seen stopping right before the edge of a cliff, while Jay puts his arm over on Judy's shoulder to warn her of the danger coming in from all the explosives over on the dam. Really like some of the panel borders utilized over in this sequence, as well as all the negative space and really fascinating cutouts of the panels on the page here. Also really appreciate how Jay rockets over to the dam to try and stop it from exploding before Judy is able to hurt herself. In this sequence set over in the past, we also learn that Judy and Jay are both trying to rescue Jay's opposite Joan. Really watching these two individuals meet up with Joan and pulling on the intrigue of Joan forgetting the fact that Judy existed over in the first place is just a fantastic way to introduce some of the plot threads over with Stargirl The Lost Children in this series. We mentioned this over in the intro for the video, but I really thought it was fascinating how Jay Garrick The Flash operates in both the past and present of the DC Universe, as opposed to Wesley Dodd's squarely taking place over in the past throughout that series. Also, the fact that Stargirl The Lost Children is so firmly implemented in this book makes it a lot different than what you might expect to see over in the Wesley Dodds The Sandman series as well. Really seeing some of Joan's reactions over to Judy on some of this next sequences over in the present day was a fantastic moment in the issue. I really thought that Diego Orlatugi captured some of the facial details for Joan, especially as an old woman, with so much grace and subtlety. As the issue gets deeper into the runtime, I think there's a couple moments here where Diego Orlatugi misses out on some background detail over in the page. And while I do think a lot of these layouts are really gorgeous across Jay Garrick the Flash, I still think there's maybe a little bit more potential in what the creative team is able to evoke here. Would love to see Orlatugi get even more animated across some of these moments here. Over in the present day, I really appreciated how Jeremy Adams lent some strong characterization over to Judy. Watching Judy start to develop maybe some of the beginnings of an inferiority complex as she learns about all of the other extended Flash family members was a really compelling plot point throughout this issue. 
I also liked how Judy kind of ran into action towards the end of this series, and we got to watch Jay once again rescue her, but in a much different context here. Of course, this issue is also really interested in exploring all these plot details regarding Stargirl the Lost Children, and I really found that when the plot came to introduce some of the elements of Jay and Judy's arch nemesis known as Dr. Elemental, this book did a great job switching tones and introducing some of the sinister machinations that readers read over in the JSA comic book issue. In the later sequence towards the end of the comic book, I thought there were some wonderful uses of negative space here, portraying so much characterization over from Judy in the issue. Also, I think Orlatugi does an excellent job expressing Judy's facial details in ways that look unique over to the comic book page. It feels like Judy is always reacting over to some of her scenarios. I really found that Jay Garrick the Flash was a bold and breezy issue to get through, especially if you have experience over from the new Golden Age and with Stargirl the Lost Children. Really think that Jeremy Adams lent a subtle and unique tone over between Judy and Joan as well. Some of the intrigue surrounding Joan over in the issue and her altered memories is I think one of the most compelling plot threads over in Jay Garrick the Flash. Also, I wanted to very quickly mention that there's just a wonderful page where Olatugi is able to show off so many of the different speedsters across the DC universe to start to introduce Judy to just the sheer amount of speedsters within DC's current publishing line. So at the end of the day here, I thought Jay Garrick the Flash was a really tremendous way to expand the new golden age. I really expected the majority of these comics to be navel-gazing series really focused on the past of what DC has accomplished. And the fact that this series is bolstered so firmly in the present, I think, is really fascinating. I also did not expect this series to pick up on some of those plot threads from Stargirl the Lost Children. I really thought the core JSA comic book would be carrying some of those elements too. I want to know from you, did you find some of the modern day adventures over with Judy and Jay to be compelling? What were some of your thoughts over with her past adventures as well, setting up some of the villains and intrigue across this series? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for coming to check out our review over for Jay Garrick the Flash, and we'll be back to talk DC Comics and the new Golden Age in the near future. Thanks so much, and I'll see you soon.